Welcome back to the Developing Values and Principles in Health and Social Care Practice. I'm now going to deliver a presentation on safeguarding adults at risk. This presentation will provide you with extensive research and understanding of the importance of safeguarding vulnerable individuals and how this is done by health and social care workers. This is relevant for this assessment as the concept of safeguarding is followed both in your placement journey and also when you will be writing up your case study assignment. So please do make some notes where you can. Safeguarding is defined as an act of protecting an individual from risk or harm. When working with vulnerable individuals, it is always important to be mindful of all aspects which may impact or hinder their right to live in safety, free from abuse and even neglect. Who is an adult at risk? Overall, we are aware that all children are at risk of being harmed. Therefore, all children must be safeguarded. However, when we are speaking about adults, the question arises in regards to who is an adult at risk and who is a vulnerable adult. As defined, an adult who is at a statutory requirement to be safeguarded are those who are 18 years or over, who have care or support needs, or is experiencing or has experienced abuse, harm or neglect. Therefore, as a result of this, it is a statutory requirement to safeguard these particular individuals. Moving on now to the next slide. This is the Care Act 2014. The Care Act 2014 sets out guidelines and principles for health and social care workers to ensure that they are efficiently safeguarding individuals. Within the Act, there is the Safeguarding Adults Board who are there to ensure that they are particularly focusing on safeguarding adults. On this next slide, you now have some legislations which relate to safeguarding adults. Please make a note of this as you can apply this into your essays. I'll just give you a few moments to do this. Moving on now, within the CARE Act, there are six priorities in the CARE Act. These are, as mentioned on the slide, they are all equally important when safeguarding a vulnerable individual. Therefore, they must be followed closely to help protect an adult from harm or abuse. In regards to this, there are also the six principles of safeguarding. These are as follows. Accountability, empowerment, partnership, prevention, proportionality and protection. They are, they are all equally important to understand how one as a healthcare worker could safeguard a vulnerable adult. Please make some, some notes on this as they are, they are essential details which you can refer to in your assignments. On my next slide, we now have, have a detailed account of how we could make safeguarding personnel. To summarise, when safeguarding adults, it is imperative that all healthcare workers are mindful and are ensuring that it is person-led. You are not treating all individuals as the same, however you are working with an adult in regards to their individual needs. Healthcare workers must work closely to identify what is safe for, for an adult and what is not by closely monitoring environments, behaviour and also in some cases their attitude. Moving on now, I will now be reflecting upon 10 different types of adult abuses. All these abuses are evidently different and it is important to note that it is possible that in some cases it may be the result that an adult is experiencing more than one type of this abuse. What does the Safeguarding Adult Board do? The Safeguarding Adult Board help and protect adults in its area from abuse and neglect, 
through coordinating and reviewing a multi-agency approach. Some of the ways in which they do this is that they monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of training. Overall, I can conclude that they are essential in safeguarding adults from harm and abuse. Safeguarding steps. The steps follow to safeguard adults are the following. The first step is to is recognising a concern. This could be a change in behaviour or noticing visible signs one visible signs that one is being abused, harmed or neglected. The next would be referring a concern. So you would refer it to a designated member of staff. This would then be followed by a risk assessment and triage and a section 42 inquiry. And then eventually it would conclude to a review and closure of the case. Reflecting back to a point I mentioned in the previous slide, it is always important to ask if you notice a change in behaviour. However, it's also important to note that you are asking in a mindful manner by not asking misleading questions. Moving on now to if someone discloses abuse to you, it is important that you must be patient with the individual and allow them to speak freely. As a healthcare professional, you must ensure that you, you are not so opinionated and judgmental towards them, whilst also ensuring that you are not making promises, such as promising them that you will not tell anybody about what they have disclosed. It is, all, it is always best to be honest. However, if there is the case that an individual is in danger, it's important that you directly call the police and report this. In respect to this, the Safeguarding Adult Board emphasises on the importance that any person receiving a concern has a duty to report it to relevant agencies. However, before making a referral, it's important that the adult is made aware of this. Having said this, all abuse should be reported without consent if you think that there is a risk to children or if there are any other adults involved, if it is organisational abuse, if it is an abuse which is perpetrated by an employee, if it could be the case of an abuse which has happened on property owned or operated by an organisation providing care, or relevant to criminal investigation and if there is the case of serious harm or threat to life. Having said this, the Mental Capacity Act protects all adults' right to make decisions for themselves. Therefore, healthcare professionals are unable to make informed decisions without informing the adult unless they are in serious harm or is a situation which I have mentioned in the previous slide. Overall, as we conclude this presentation on adult safeguarding, as students, you will be expected to undergo either a challenge or work placement. It is therefore imperative that you are all aware of what safeguarding is and how you could report any signs of abuse. I believe this presentation has provided you with the insightful information regarding this. Having said this, as per the assignment briefs, you are also expected to work on a case study. The case studies could be found on Moodle and it is not and it is not this particular case study. However, you could use the safeguarding information which you have learnt through this presentation and apply it to one of the case studies which you would like to be work on. 
I hope this provides you all with some clarity. Thank you very much for listening.